we'll continue on with this show. If we're outside the story and we're free from it because we know the truth and we see that it's so much fake stuff and so many hoaxes and so much stuff to where it can't be uh, reality and people in on conspiracies and all that can't be it's just too much stuff that's fake and contrived that it can only be a story you know what i mean like no, life itself I don't, no <laughs> <laughs> he's lost tom what you what your take is on it like well, how would... one verse will just talk about all the six minutes to this point you just bring out one verse where christ says he's bringing division um within the family and he wants that. Everything about the God of the Bible from the very, very beginning to the end is about division. And then different ways to split people up, isolate people from the evil. And so once a person, all of us get curious and go into that evil, God sends the evil, you know? And then, so we don't want that anymore. You know, that's why the Bible says, come out of her, my people. Uh, like isolate yourself so God can then know that you're the one that wants to be out of this place. And so we have, that's the part that we have to do. We have to come out of this place, spiritually and potentially even physically, um, that kind of thing. And so uh, that's not a new narrative. And so Tom's confused, as he should be, because what he just said for the last six minutes is just complete nonsense. Was it fake if it's being no, played it's out? It's not, real. Not fake, but like, well, when you use the word fake, I have no other way to take <laughs> it. Okay. All Good Serving can talk about now is just how smart they are he is compared to everybody else. Like this is the only point that they can really sort of belabor and then highlight because they're not allowed to talk about anything else. And so all they can talk about is how evil the music industry is, like, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, how do these people not get it and just make that into a big point? That's obvious. Like there's a lot of actors on this earth. Uh, those who crucified Christ were actors. And so powered by the most high. Donald Trump and all these people, Russia, Putin vaccine, they're powered by the most high. Uh, this is a God's movie. And so he controls everything, the script, according to the Bible, uh, for those people who are actually into it. And um, we're just actors in this movie. And so we just know now, people who come by here, we have a better sense of what everybody's role is. And so these people, I would never want, <laughs> no one could pay me enough money to play this role that Tom Barker and Good Servant has been, have been commissioned to do by Satan, just talk in circles and just say stupid things. You know, when you can just bring out one Bible verse and then that's it, and then edify people and then um, have Tom confused and no one has any idea what, <laughs> what Good Servant's talking about. This is what I mean, these players, no, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Let me clarify. Uh, when I say <laughs> He's gonna fake, clarify. I mean like, like, to to somebody in the story dinosaurs may be real and the earth they might they think this stuff they're in that story but when they know the truth and they're outside of it they see oh that's not real that's not real that looks we have to be in the end times <laughs> like we just have to be i don't know it's not funny but we we have to be every time i hear these people it makes me more excited in a good way about the Bible. Contrived, that looks like a hoax. That is a setup. These are obvious things that you can point out and teach somebody, right? I'm not saying fake, but Rick, uh, prepared, you know? There's, like, the future is not as, uh, as wide open as we think it is. It's How do we have free will then? If the end, if you're on a racetrack and you are told that everybody is going to end up crossing that path and that end goal is the Bible says every knee will bow to Christ and so that's the end goal no matter what there's no other God that's going to be at the finish line that's what the Bible says implies you know says and then implies in many many places and so and those who don't God will destroy you know tag them with the mark of the beast and then destroy them how is that free will uh, did we have a choice to be on that racetrack and then know that that's the ending and there's only two options is that free will <laughs> It's, we're in the story, you know, there's very, very little leeway, you know? He's just prov disproving his point that he made earlier. So we have what I call, again, local free will, and that's consistent with the Bible. And then that local free will, God wants us to come out of her, my people, and then also minister to the poor and oppressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, like God is a hero. God created us. We messed it up. There's a, a, a villain, a, you know, a spiritual creature style. They're villains. 
uh, 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 God came and reconciled everything as like our hero and saved us and he's going to call us up in the end when things are getting bad but it's nothing to be afraid of because it's and it might be painful and it might be you know hard to go through but it's it's already written in that we were going to be saved and, and her, you know you know what I mean like it's not nothing to be scared of we're not allowed to say that they'll call us up in the end, which is actually correct what he's talking about. That's what salvation is. And so we're not allowed to say that, even though I'm tempted to say that a lot, because we're just tired of this place. We're always supposed to have the humble thought that it's not for us, you know? And so we have to prepare for the fact that it may not be for us. And so then, um, you know, I've made my plans accordingly, um, if I were to see that, which I would love to see, Christ's second coming. And then if it's not for me, I'm not hanging around after. <laughs> you know, it's like, just well, whatever, like, you know, just get mad or like, there's nothing to do here right now. So <laughs> it's like, then God's elect are taken away. It's like, what else? There's like even worse. <laughs> and so, um, you know, that's the way we should talk. And this guy's already halfway up in the air and he doesn't even know anything about what's going on in the world it's just part of the story you know well i correct that he does he's just not allowed to talk about it but if your eyes are open and you see that absolutely these people but the, you know you gotta understand those people that are spreading these lies they don't see it that way they're or they're trying to change the end of the story they right. know what satan knows the end he knows his end right, right. That's yeah. true. He can't change it, but he's going to take as many with him as he can. I mean, it's all real. It's all going to happen. Just because, it's, I mean, it, the book has been written. It just hasn't been, the, you know, fully played out yet. But we're the last scene. Very little. I think he's about to say it. The scene has started. Yeah. But do you think Very it's much. different for the, we're in the late stages. stuck in the narrative than it is for us that can see it from the outside, like, Wow, meaning what? Like, meaning what? Like, 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 say we're watching the news. We're like, wow, that's obviously a crisis actor. That's obviously not a real thing. These people come by here, this little, just for fun, this like review. We see these people as actors, and so don't be ashamed of that. To tell these people that you're just stupid, talking in circles, thinking that you're saved, and don't even know what salvation is. Don't read the Bible at all. We don't have to take these people seriously anymore. It's just for comedy purposes only, and a little bit of. Um, psychology, I guess. People are obviously lying. You know, like, like, like the spinning ball is obviously not true. You know, but when I was stuck in the narrative, the spinning ball seemed like it was a, a you know, it seemed. Well, what do you mean by different for them than it is for us? I don't. I mean, so, I don't know so, what you're trying to make there. Okay. I mean, we see the truth and they don't. I mean, I get that. If the spinning ball is obviously not true, and a majority of the Christian church still believe in it, and will fight you if you start talking about other things, and I've had this happen many, many times, then um, how are they saved? Like, why are we, throw them under the bus? Because they're obviously not going anywhere. Uh, they don't want to go anywhere. They don't want to be saved. They hate the God that they claim to worship, like these two. Dad, I don't know what right, 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 right. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Like, when you're in, when you're in it, when you're in the narrative, right? Everybody's in it. But, but yeah, but maybe they don't see the truth like we see it. Well, obviously not. <laughs> Nine minutes in, and he just, uh, Mr. Ob Mr. Obvious. Uh, wow. Th these are raw talks? Really? How are we not in the end times? Yes, I don't. But like, but, like, if you and me were watching the news, we would be able to say, hey, that's a crisis actor, and you would be like, yeah, that is a crisis actor. Like, we obviously see it. But they don't, even though they're looking at what we're looking at, they don't see it. I don't know. They're the ones that are hiring the crisis actors. That's a, that's a good response. No, no, that's no. Funny. Like, let's say you, me, and say my brother. They know they're right, lying. Are, are together. Rumpus knows that he's lying. And George and all these people. And, and the people who talk about uh, the financial news, like the market's rigged. It's obvious. They know that they're lying. Because once you tell them about something else, they, they'll leave. They'll just literally leave the room. Or they'll make fun of you or whatever. So they, they all, that know, they're, they're human in that sense. God's spirit is in them to know uh, the truth and lies. And so they're accountable for that because they know the truth. And when you tell it to them, they leave. We're watching the news, right? And we see like a crisis actor. Just like when you bring the Bible to these people, they'll leave, you know, or slander you and all that kind of stuff. Paula apparently said that she didn't block me because 
I mentioned reincarnation is because I made a racist statement or something like that. And the racist statement I want people to know is that I'm proclaiming that Christ is dark skin. And so that's their job. And so I want people to know when the two witnesses are here, the people that are going to chastise them the most are the religious people, because these people are going to call them like the Antichrist and the false prophet and all that kind of stuff. And then the Hebrews are going to say, well, you're not the two witnesses. I am. And so it's the religious people that are going to be the ones that are the most offended by the two witnesses and then, you know, Christ in his second coming. And so I want people to know that, you know, because the average person doesn't care, you know, for the most part, um, as long as the people are not necessarily bothering anybody individually, they're just like, whatever. So um, these are the people, you know, that their job is to just when truth comes out is to not just like walk away from it, it's like slander it, you know, and prevent it from propagating doing like a, a covid fake covid thing right people believe obvious. the lie i get that <laughs> right right so tom's it's getting anxious impatient us. like are, can i get can i remove him out of the story or does god only remove a certain amount of us what is this guy talking about people? dude like i'm not necessarily picking on him individually but this is just stupid stuff that you have to you have to be dumb when you take truth away it's just the like everywhere like even in like science and math and whatever it's like if you put in a lie or some axiom that's not true, then you're gonna have to like not talk about it or like talk around it, you know, as an assumption that's false or whatever. And it's just, you have to say stupid things at some point. And so not that long, didn't take that long in this hangout, all these hangouts, but even Tom's like, what the hell is this? We remove him out of the story, he's in it. He's Everybody okay. alive is in it, bro. Okay, we're yeah. all in the, we're all in the story. We're all so in. Why would you remove him? This video needs more dislikes, <laughs> so uh smash that dislike button no no no. we're all in creation right we're all in creation we can't escape it that's we're in it right i'm not saying that this is what i'm saying right the, 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 it's he's not saying explain, anything but like like to to my mom right she's watching tv that's real to her the the covid i've watched this once and i didn't realize it'd be this painful to watch it again so i may not do these that often because i'm like cringing thing she believes that Right. You know, like like when she sees these crisis actors, she sees a person that is sick. Right. You know, like like we're like to us. So it's what are you saying? That I get. I mean, I get that you've gone over that five different ways. That <laughs> I, I get, I get her to, to 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 be separate, like we are, where we can see that it's obviously fake. I don't know if you can or not. That's up to her. Or just God. She has to open up for it's not up to her. It's up to God. These people are just actors. Um, Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, all these people, you could go and show them all the results of the bombing that they're doing and go up to the bankers and tell them, hey, why are you paying me with my own money or withholding my own money from me? They'll, you think they're going to care, <laughs> like, at all? Um, stop the mark of the beast. I'm tired of you guys, you know, like, enslaving us, like these idiots who are putting on masks, like Zorro masks. And stuff. You think anybody's going to care? And definitely take you seriously, being that stupid. Um, these people are actors. <laughs> and so it's not up to them. And so they're not allowed to bring in the most high. I want people to know that. Not just them, but the Hebrews, everybody, uh, most people on earth, um, that's their job, literally. Like, potentially even paid for it. For mind, well, it is for her guys. I mean, you have, if, you, if you had anything to do with it, she'd already know the truth. Right, right, right. That's what I'm saying. So, like, <laughs> so that's exactly what I'm saying. So, like, does God only remove a certain amount of us to, like, warn everyone? You know, like, hey, it look, don't wake up to... anybody up. <laughs> That's just what's been happening throughout people, human history. But just to get them ready, you know, just to get them ready for, okay, look, it, it, it looks like, like the, the time is coming to an end and it's time to get serious about God, you know, and we should, you know, just encourage people, it, maybe not so much try to show them the truth or pull them out of the, of the lies or whatever, but just like encourage them to... The lies are so ridiculous that the people that fall for it, they're not human, you know? And like Gregory Manorino, who's like a admitted Freemason, talks about this every day. And he's just, it's a financial channel that these people are not human, making fun of people, Mnuchin has a fan club and all that. He just freely calls them just actors. And so, and that's a biblical fact. So I don't know why this person has already spent 11 minutes talking about something that's an obvious biblical fact. It's like, it's like talking for 10 minutes about does God love the poor pontificating? Hey, maybe he does, you know, I'm not sure. Really, it's everywhere. <laughs> and so uh, there's actors everywhere in the Bible. It's obvious. It's just in infinitely obvious right now because we're living in this quote unquote movie. To get closer to God and, and to That's what that. a Christian should be doing to everybody every day. 
Yeah, because not in these days. I'm very confident in saying this that our job is not to save anybody because we know what salvation is. That's the lie that we've been taught. Our job is what the Bible says, come out over my people. You know, so for those who have an ear to hear, that's what we're supposed to do. The reason why I, I thought this, right, or, or you know, came, like came to this kind of uh, idea, right, is because like what idea? There's so many <laughs> prophets, right? That were that were. I'm not calling us prophets, right, by any means, but there's so. They are. They're false prophets, and they're gonna believe that this quote alien invasion are aliens. You know, when it's Christ's second coming. So many prophets were like the people just didn't listen to them. You know, like exactly. oh yeah. I, you know, but like, like, is that, is that kind of like the role that like, why would you even need a prophet if people are going to listen to God? <laughs> and so like th those people, if they're, if a large group of them are inclined to hear somebody sent from God, which a prophet would be, why would you even need a prophet? So <laughs> they're already be kind of doing virtuous things and then God would spare them, you know, of destruction. Usually prophets come with bad news. Most of the time, Christ was one that came with good news. And so um and also bad news uh, for sure for his left hand side but um <laughs> so i don't understand like we're already like 12 minutes in and he's like wrestling with just basically you don't even need the bible you just see what's going on in the world there are non-religious people um like freemason and stuff who know that these people are just actors and so and even just watch any youtube video you go down just bad acting this I, there was a video recently of a girl who got uh, was getting choked or whatever by the police, you know, PK said it's acting. I sort of sensed that in the comment that I wrote. I'm like, if this is real, it's bad, but like, this looks like it's staged. And then um, some kid, some five-year-old, six-year-old getting handcuffed. Really? That's just happened to make the news. All they're doing in that regard is they want people to hate the police and then they're going to bring in the military. And so to enforce the Operation Warp Speed. And so that's just obvious. So, and that's needed to accomplish the Mark of the Beast which is really the only thing to talk about, really, at this point. Christ's second coming in the Mark of the Beast. See a certain corner of us, our truthers, and, you know, like, that's kind of the role we have. We're going to warn the people, but they're going to not believe us, you know? Like, oh, that's, that's not going to happen. There's not going to be a flood. You know, that's, that's horse pucky, right? Like, like, Noah wasn't able to get them to see it, but he could warn them about it, you know? Yeah, I mean, obviously that's our job to do. So the Christian church is totally brain dead. Uh, Bennett Stevens, Stephen Bennett, I call him BS, bullshit. Um, it's just, he's just an exaggeration, like a caricature of the stupidity. Other people like write the hand saying, oh, the Bible is just a book. <laughs> and all that. And these are flat earthers. These people who should be like courting a God, searching out a God who has made the flat stationary earth. Yeah, it's just a book, you know, whatever. It just got lucky on the flat earth. No big deal. It's, looks like it's getting pretty lucky on the mark of the beast. Um, pretty much every other thing, you know, that surrounds us is explained in the Bible. Um, the plain truth is still pushing that the Bible has already been fulfilled. <laughs> and so like they, he will like value it in terms of saying that it has value, but it's already been expressed in the past. And then with everything going on in the world, these are how evil and stupid these people are. And so all we can do is point out how stupid they are at this point. And then just wait for the last little bit of it to come true, which starts with Christ's second coming. I mean, just speak the truth. I mean, it's yeah. it's not complicated. I mean, no. anybody who wants to know and, and find out and know the truth for sure, I mean, it, it takes 10, 15 minutes to see, at least to get you where you start looking at more and more evidence. I mean... I've never heard these people discuss anything about the Bible, like, in any, like, serious way. It's just little, like, little snippets, like, minor, you know, references to the Bible and all that, so... Their job is to get people away from the Bible and listen to this. And so, you know, for the people who come by my channel, we're into the Bible for real. And we find this to be like, just like children, you know, just talking about nothing, literally. And Tom's pointing this out in this hangout that this, all this 13 minutes was just a waste of time. This isn't like uh, some really deep, dark, hidden thing. <laughs> I mean, all the information's out there. They always have the truth out there. It may be harder to find, but it's there. I mean, if you're too dumb to question anything, because we're, we're raised not to question, just the opposite of what the Bible tells us to do. That's right. So the Bible says, search all things, but we don't. Good servant doesn't know that an ounce of that was directed towards him. <laughs> and so he's just too, like, stupid to figure it out. Tom obviously is kind of making fun of people broadly, but he's directing that towards the good servant. And so you can sense that these two people are not as close as they 
come across maybe to others that there is there is an uh an unease you know and so that's not the case when people who are really with god you know like uh we we know when we're with in the presence of somebody else who's uh close to christ you know we know that and so there's none none of this like weirdness kind of <laughs> kind of thing and like uh, this is like not even close. This is just to kill time, really. But um, you can sense that when these two, these two people talk, that um, Tom is wondering what good servant's even talking about, and good servant thinks that he's on a spiritual level. You know, like Paige is like a baby in Christ and all this kind of stuff. This person's a, a Satanist and has we have no idea what this person said for the last thirteen minutes. We just accept all things, right? You know, so I mean, if, if we just quit being so stupid and actually literally start doing what the Bible says, the stuff is clear, right? I mean, e easily known. Easily. Yeah. It, it, it's to, That's what's so crazy to me about it is that these things are obviously true and provable. Like, like, yeah. You know, it's just like this, so, when you go back to what you're saying about the prophets and the apostles. What's Mystery Babylon? If it's so obvious and true, what's what's Mystery Babylon? Do a show on Mystery Babylon. Go through your 10 stupid options that you think that there are. That's ridiculous in these days. It's not a mystery anymore. I'm sorry. America is modern day Sodom. That's a fact. And um, Babylon, which is a term that's used for confusion, is being fulfilled in these raw talks. You know, it's just confusion. And so all we can do now is cry out to God and say, we get it. You know, like we know that you, you're bringing these people and setting these people up to talk in circles. <clears throat> when they were speaking this truth, it was obvious to them too. Right. I mean, they, they whole cities would turn on them. An entire, yeah. you know, not one person. And they were speaking the obvious truth, Steve. So, I mean, it, why wouldn't that happen today? It, it is happening. That's yeah, what exactly. I'm saying. So, I don't know what, what you're trying to get at there. <laughs> so, 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 okay, so this... Good servants like really kind of wondering, hey, how come people don't get the truth? You know, it's like, uh, well, um, the Bible talks about the mark of the beast. And so how is that going to get accomplished unless a majority of the world are in on it, including the Christian church, including the truth community? This is what I was trying to get at, right? Like, one, it was kind of a trip for me to realize that like, wow, we're, we were, each of us, all of us were intentionally created with our own character and our own story and our own sophistication. I was like, that to me, that was beautiful. It wasn't nothing new, but it was beautiful. How do we have free will then? This guy is contradicting himself and all the Christian, quote, Christians do. If we were made in that specific way, which is true, um, in a unique character, in a unique way by an entity, the creator, the most high, who also made Christ, um, um, uh, did he consult us? <laughs> you know, did I have a choice in how tall I was? and? Uh, I, how tall I am and, you know, uh, when I would discover flat earth, for example, and when I would, whatever, you know, what school I was, I would go to where I would live, who my parents would be. Did I have any choice in any of that? So how is that free will? <clears throat> to think about it. And then number two, that like the, the story is written. So we do have like the benefit of knowing the end, right? Which is cool. I thought it was like, you know, we're at this end part, right? Where, um, you know, we have the whole story and, um, you know, not only that, but we have ways of finding out, like, like with the technology, the way it is now, we have ways to like uncover some of the stuff that the devil's doing, you know, which is like a huge benefit, you know, it's not technology. It's God. God tells us certain things. He opens pathways in uh, people's brains. And that's also in the Bible. <laughs> and so what is this person talking about? Technology allowing people to learn truth. People have not learned truth in the past through technology. Technology is limiting people's ability to get to God because they're spending time listening to this trash, which is on YouTube tech platform, utilizing technology. And so um, it's actually getting in the way in many cases. And so it's making the world non-spiritual. And so it's just obvious God exists. You know, we should have just been said that from the beginning. And so it's obvious God made this. And so that's that's all really a person needs. And then all this other stuff, the Bible says are going to be destroyed. You know, all these buildings, all these 5G towers and all that kind of stuff. They're just going to be burned. It's a burden, but it's a, it's a benefit too. 
you know, and but like, but like, so I was thinking that all that was beautiful, you know, but then I'm thinking like, like, am, am I supposed to be like going to like a, cause there are certain people I go to and show stuff to and they get it all in one day. Like just, oh yeah, I see it. Wow. That's crazy. You know, <laughs> but like, like, like most of the time it's like a struggle, you know? Right. And so like, I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not my job to like, you know, pull them out i mean i speak the truth because that's what i i owe everybody right is the truth but like but like maybe i'm just supposed to encourage people to get close to god before. if they're so into the truth why do they make up stuff you know and then like <laughs> say things that i said that are out of context and all that kind of stuff these people hate the truth they're just gatekeepers because it's it's becoming that time and because i was feeling like sometimes especially like back when I first started getting into flat earth, you this know, is painful. maybe not so much now cause I've learned my lesson, but like that I'd be like wanting to tell everybody to the point where I'm like forced, forcing these videos, you know, like you have to see. Only somebody tied to the government could do this because, and he's admitted that he's been in the military. The whole truth community looks like it's littered with military and truck drivers and stuff, which is just strange. But, um, you can't do that in a normal life. Just go and tell everybody, really. Um, even this mask thing, you can't even really speak up against that and expect to like get a job and all that kind of stuff. And so I posted something on LinkedIn recently where I'm like, does anybody else get the sense that like, they're, you know, the, the, co the companies are just vultures and something about that. And then like, you know, one person liked it. And then somebody else responded and said, be careful what you write. Cause like, you know, if you're looking for a job and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want a job in this place. And so yeah, I'm not, not everybody can do that. And so, um, hundreds of people saw the post, but no one replied to it. And even though they, they know that that's true, you know, that the corporations are just greedy vultures. And so, um, that's why the Bible says, come out of her, my people. And so that's our only responsibility in these days. It is just one, one, because like I have family members, right, that I've been asking to watch videos for three years, four years, right? And they won't watch one video from me no matter what I say, right? Like, do this if you love me. I have $87 in my pocket. I'll give you everything. I mean, I've tried everything, right? <laughs> right. Like, like, I've tried everything, right? And like, maybe my job. He's tried everything but reading the Bible that says that there are people that Satan has planted, you know, and they'll be in our family. They'll be, have YouTube channels. What is it to do that? Maybe my job is to like, is to like dissipate, like try to encourage people to say, hey, you know, I'm going to use my credibility instead of for this to just say, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that we're getting close to the end and it's really, really a good idea to get closer to God and to really appreciate what he's given us, you know, which is, which is paradise and none of us deserve it, you know? None of us deserve it. And so it does sound funny to some people when they say, oh, believing. Some do deserve it, you know, and then again, they won't bring these verses out. But the Bible declares certain people, not Christ, perfect, you know. And so uh, God can say that, you know, because he can look down at somebody he's made, obviously Christ as well, and declare them to be very, very righteous, you know, and very, very worthy of certain things. And the fact that they would not take credit for it proves that they're worthy like John the Baptist. And so that's part of it. You know, that's the whole uh, package. Uh, God would never look down on somebody, give them a compliment, knowing that they're going to get boastful and proud about it. They're, he's going to say stuff like that to people like, you know, Moses, uh, Job, Abraham, Elijah, John the Baptist, and all that, because he knows that they're going to say, I'm not worthy, you know? And so, uh, you know, don't, don't get caught up in this stuff. You know, these people don't do anything like at all. They just sit here and just talk nonsense for, Minutes. And Jesus sounds like just saying like magic words and you get heaven. Well, you know, no matter what you have done in your life, you would never earn it. So, right. it, so your works doesn't matter. Of course, it sounds too easy because it is because it's a because it's a gift for us. Of course, it sounds too easy. <laughs> Does anything about the God of the Bible come across as like he's just easy? You know, like hey, whatever. You know, no big deal. Just uh, do whatever you want, you know, and then whenever you get around to it, just kind of say the prayer and everything will be fine. That's insane. You know, again, these people will not bring out the Bible and they cannot teach that this is hell. And so uh, there's this guy still pushing this uh, false narrative that has have hoodwinked a majority of the world that um, salvation is some free gift. And, you know, it sounds easy and it is and all that kind of stuff. No, 
you know why would the bible say those who endure till the end why would god put people through so much trials and so many trials and tribulations send his people on cargo slave ships um you know brutally um enslaved if everything was just a sinner's prayer you know don't get caught up with these people these people are completely evil and anybody who associates with these people i'm diplomatic with them but i know they're evil too us it's easy but god had to sacrifice the most he could sacrifice well all you gotta do is look at it like this <clears throat> yeah. you give your son a birthday present how, how much work did he have to do to get it yeah none except it and it was That's our, the same with so they had to be the son <laughs> and so um they have to be in the group you know and then so we have an understanding that now through through the bible that you know, God can graft people in, you know, and so it's, it's open to all nations, you know, and that's what the Bible teaches. And, and so I teach that. And so you have to be in that group and God is doing that. And so uh, God doesn't go and give his gifts to everybody. He says, don't throw your pearls before swine. He's telling us that. And so like God would do that. <laughs> he knows who the actors are. And so it's for a very, very small group of people. And so, um, you know, that's God is chosen. So um, all we're doing now is experiencing uh, judgments that God has already decided. Right? All you have yeah. to do is accept it. You have to accept Christ's crucifixion. Yeah. You know? Lots of people have. Is Ken Hovind saved? Even though we know he's a Satanist. Um, are all these other half-truthers? Do they think, you know, um, Jaronism is saved? Or uh, Oakley and all these people who claim to be Christian? Quantum Eraser? Just whatever they teach doesn't matter. Not a big deal. So these people are all on the same team. They're all on God's left-hand side. What he did for us, it's a gift. It's not worth, it's, it's a free gift if you choose it. Now your son, if you give him that birthday present he, and he doesn't want it, he can say no, dad, and give it back to you and not even open it. That's his choice. And That's it's right. the same with salvation. That's the same choice you have. It is that simple. Either you receive it or you reject it. <laughs> That's right. I, I know that like I and I I've been guilty of this kind of at, at the beginning. It's not that simple. Like my, like and they haven't and they haven't backed any of that up with the Bible. With God is like, like I just feel felt like I just owe God so much, you know. Like I don't want to let him down because I know how valuable that that salvation. Can't change one thumbnail, but he loves this God and is waiting for that God to come and rescue him. Really? Is that like I feel like like I'm not good enough to go and. I have to know that I'm not, right? At the same time of knowing that I'm going to go. So right. it, it, it's like a weird way of like... His, his channel's called The Good Servant. That's the irony. There's contradiction after contradiction. These people are just stupid. I'm just pointing it out. But his channel's literally called The Good Servant. He just said he's not good enough. <laughs> so why don't you call yourself The Bad Servant? You know, he's a good servant. He is for Satan. Yeah, I got to feel confident that, that I'm going to go because, because I know that... Christ's sacrifice is sufficient. You have to feel confident. Where is that in the Bible? We're told to always take the lowest seat and um, assume that what we do is not good enough for God. Always. Even if our prayer was, quote, sincere, a normal Christian would be like, it's not It's not enough. I don't know, you know. And so that's what a normal person would do because you're dealing with an infinite entity that, you know, we don't know his judgments fully yet. And so that's just like a normal person, not even the Bible yet. Um, this all this confidence, all this kind of stuff is is what Satan wants, you know. And then so once people do this and just focus on the sinner's prayer and that's it, then don't bring up the Bible anymore. You know, don't worry about all the other things, you know, and all that. So the end can happen the way the Bible predicts. And so the Christian church, the flat earth Christian church and the 501c3 church, all these people are necessary for the end times to happen exactly the way the Bible says. So they're Satan's one of his biggest assets. For me to, to go to heaven that's the that's the ultimate thing right but i also gotta know that i'm not good or better than anybody you know everybody goes to heaven who else how else can you get god's judgment except be where god is christ and the most high in heaven and then the question then is um in the end times the bible says that god's left hand side uh will be destroyed you know in a lake of fire and in this actual fire on earth and so that's obvious. And so um, everybody's judgment comes from heaven. You know, that's the way it is. And so 
there's no place where a soul burns or whatever. Every soul and body that's going to get destroyed will be here on earth. And that's what Christ teaches. And then they don't care what Christ says at all. So uh, they're not going to talk about it. Or worse, for that matter, you know, because because like like what we do as human beings is like like I can compare myself to another human being and say, oh, OK, well, according to how humans go, that person is, is probably a better person than me. Right. But compared to God. Right. <laughs> neither of us are good and the gap between the two of us is minute why call yourself the good servant then <laughs> and so these people let us know bennett stevens bs bullshit brian staveley bullshit um good servant just in their channel names just a little bit of numerology whatever we know that these people are just actors and so every <laughs> every talking about goodwill and then debunks himself now he's talking about no one's good which is true except god christ says this so we know that and um He's like, he's a good servant. <laughs> really? It's, uh, it's, it's insane. We got to be at the end. The Bible's true. I know that now at this point. To holy. You know, it's like, God is holy. That's a huge gap between God yes. and me, right? And so it's... By the way, the main reason we know that Christ is good and the Most High is good only is because um, they decide what is good. And so sometimes what is good from their vantage point will involve killing, you know, mass killing. You know, and then we've seen that in the Bible. So normal people outside looking at we'd be like, well, that's not good. But God defines what's good. And so you can't say, anybody can't say they're good unless uh, they do exactly what God says. And only very few people have done that in human history. Christ, obviously, perfectly. And so that's why, you know, we, we, are, we may be good for like an hour, you know, or just do something very, very pure in that moment, you know, and just our human reaction and, we're capable of being, quote, good on a very, very local time scale, you know, and that kind of thing. But to say we are good in terms of everything that we do from this point going forward or in the past, uh, we can never say that. Even if a lot of the things that we do are good, God decides what those things are. And I think a lot of people will be shocked when God looks at people's lives, his right hand side. There are things that we thought were bad that were good and um, th things that we thought were good were bad because our intentions were not correct. You know, our heart was not in the right place. The same like God and Charles Manson is a huge gap too. But the difference between me, me and Charles Manson might be huge on earth, right? But like to God, it's very minute. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're, right. we're, both of us are not good. <laughs> so if that's the case, and he's debunking the salvation theology, if that's the case, then how do you know that your prayer was sincere? If you, Charles Manson's sitting next to you, and then you're saying a prayer. And then, so why would God look at you as a more sincere person than he just admitted Charles Manson? You know, from God's vantage point, they're the same. We're the same. You know, God could accuse us rightfully of all sins. I agree with that. You know, but very, very few people live that way. And so, and understand that truly. And so if a person did, they would know then that even the most sincere of sinners' prayers, God could look at that and be like, that's a serial killer that just asked me for salvation. And I reject it. You know, and so God's free to assess that based on the theological truth that he just said. So any normal person would always say, like I said earlier, it's not enough. You know, it's not I'm not sincere enough. I didn't do enough charity. I didn't I didn't do what God wanted. You know, even if it is a prayer, which is not. God has chosen these things already. Yeah, we're just experiencing them now. That's what the Bible teaches, not what these guys <laughs> care about. But that again, so there's just contradiction after contradiction. And so. This is the problem when you lie or tell half truths or I don't even want to say this is half. This is nowhere near half. The Hebrews are closer in terms of like having more truth uh, as far as a group on earth. These people are like nowhere near. <laughs> it's like they've taken a baby step over a flat earth and just just reverted back to all the same gibberish that. So the 501c3 church, they're all ball earthers. But, you know, you just add on the flat earth and everything else that they teach us. OK, really? It's like in school, the only thing that they lied to us about was the ball earth. Not like the economic system, debt, you know, you're being enslaved. Do you need to go to school for 20 some years? Really? They didn't lie about everything. <laughs> really? It's just the ball earth. They carved that out, you know, and then everything else is okay. The whole education system's a cancer. All of religion's a cancer as well. And they're part of that. <laughs> you know? And so, like, that's hard for some people to grasp, you know? Well, the Bible and, uh, sums it up. It says there is no one righteous. No, not one. 
you know. And our best slips are dirty rags, you know, our best yeah. work. <laughs> oh, I mean. So if Charles Manson as a kid said this, said the prayer sincerely, maybe, or somebody like that, uh, or even Ken Hoven is a less extreme example, but we know he's a liar. Um, he can, how can he be saved? Because, you know, that's, uh, he's, that's again, very, very extreme. And so if we're all evil and all sinful and all that, like they've just proven and just true, then how is that prayer more sincere? How is that going to get God's attention over the others? Why don't they do a lesson and explain that? They can't because it's not true. It's that simple. I mean, all you got to do is just read those couple of verses and accept that and know it's true or God wouldn't have said it. Christ says he comes in the volume of the book. You have to understand the whole thing and you definitely have to understand Revelation. So, yeah, you can cherry pick a couple of verses and get whatever you want from the Bible. You know, uh, the Hebrews have done that. They've cherry picked some and then claim that God only loves them. But then we see them barking on the streets like dogs. You know, like if you look at End Times Teacher and all these other people, they're out of their mind. Literally, they're insane. And so, um, and they're ball earthers. So God has given us the, that as a tool to know to not take them seriously but um that's not what the bible teaches take a couple of verses here and there <laughs> that's not the way it is you got to understand the whole thing and um you got to appreciate the whole thing you know and you have to ask god for wisdom so he can open up your mind our minds to that and then more truth hopefully forever you know i mean is that basic i mean it's not basic get, god says uh you know unless you become like one of these little children you can't get to heaven because you just got, that's how we just, and that does, you know, and what that means is you just got to be innocent, not innocent, but, you know, a little baby, you know, a little child. Humble, very humble. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, you just got to be like that. You don't have to be wise or, you know, or some great no, thing. Just, have, just be innocent and sweet, that a little child, you know, like yeah. a babe. And that's who go to heaven because it's that easy. <laughs> you know, be, yeah, yeah. your child relies on you for everything. And that's what we need to do, rely on God for everything. And yeah. when we don't and think we have everything under control is when you lose everything. Because you have nothing. Right, that's it. Where's the free will then, if we're relying on God for everything? Do you have free will? Does a child have free will? Really? They've made, like, endless contradiction after, and that this is what happens when you don't read the Bible. And so it's, like, funny because it's these people are just going to get destroyed, and it's funny, I guess. We don't care. Just don't want these people to teach anything more because um, we've had enough of the lies, you know, of just people teaching us half-truths, 10% truth, 5% truth. This is, like, nothing. This is, like, 0.00001% truth where he said that we're all characters in a movie, which is true. That's the only thing that I think is redeemable in this entire 22-minute uh, uh, nonsense. And so um, then they just have gone back and forth on free will and uh, salvation. They've also debunked that themselves. So um, either the Bible is just interesting for a lot of people on earth and then some people are butchering it all by coincidence or it's true, you know, and then it's for a very small group of people, which um, hopefully we're a part of. That's exactly it. And see, I think so many of us, like, especially Americans, you know, maybe the whole world, who knows, right? But, like, like I only know kind of based on, you know, where I am, where I right, am. Like, right, right. You know, is it, is it, a lot of us fall victim to that depression, right? Thinking, oh, we're, I'm not good enough, I, you know, my life isn't that good, or, or it could be better, or I don't have enough, or that person has more, right? It's easy to fall into those little victimhoods, right? which helps nobody, right? But like... Helps a lot of people. We're victims. And the only person that we can cry out to, the entity, is God. So, no. <laughs> I reject that statement that this is just, again, same thing with that I caught dearth recently. They just need this thing to continue. They want people to like... It's a corporate mantra, even though it's a little bit subtle, not to me, but that's what their job is. You know, they're lobbying and petitioning on the behalf of Satan. But like without god that's where you kind of fall like like it seems you know you know if, if you're a christian and you keep harping on uh things like that i'm not good enough i'm not worthy i mean you yeah, really are a babe and a lord and need to grow up because a sit there and blow on something like that already knowing no kidding you're not good enough i mean right. you just have to put that behind you and exactly and they've debunked the notion that People who do charitable works are going to worry about taking credit for it. No one does that. Like no normal person 
does a charitable like close to god does that and then we'll you'll worry about oh they're going to take credit for it oh that's why i'm saved just because i did these charitable works no it's obvious this is our natural human inclination is actually to be generous and helpful but the b system has just choked that through these people and the christian church and made everything into a business you know and so uh, that kind of thing and so we're being robbed of actually our natural instinct to be christ-like you know the few of us that are into the bible for real by people like this masquerading around as truthers when they don't they debunk themselves like many many times over anybody you know yeah. to, to dwell on that and harp on that all that does is weaken your uh walk with god you know it, it, it's a stumbling block and it'll keep you from leading others to christ it's that simple i mean no none of us are good enough period okay move on get on with it okay yeah, that's man. he tells us that you're not good enough okay be done with it he gave us a gift accept it or don't you know, and it's to just, accept it, move forward, no looking back. All right. You know. Well, and it's just, and it's just so amazing thinking hey, about this. Yeah, gotta run. So that was just 22 minutes of complete gibberish. And so, um, you know, I hope people get what's going on that ultimately take home message of this. The Bible's true. We have gatekeepers. Their job is to keep people actually away from the Bible and read it and just read it and then much less take it literally and then piece it all together. And so, for me, the what I conclude from this, when I see stuff like this, hear stuff like this, um, is that the Bible's true. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.